You know, several LCS coaches, do you think some of them will end up freezing besides Walden? Aren't people trying to experiment every single day and they're coming to the conclusion that freezing isn't the ideal way to play because they're not freezing? Aren't we getting proven by those experiments every single day? Let's say there's like, what? About 200, 300, 400, 400 active proteins in League of Legends. 400 active proteins that scrim full time. How many of them are freezing? You know, I lost the game on purpose because I know LS is almost done with this game, right? You know, if I wanted first, I would have gotten first. Uh, hello? Yeah. Hey. hey, LS. First of all, thank you so much for actually taking the time. Let's go like turn by turn, like make your statement on like what you believe freezing is. And then I'll make my statement on what I believe freezing is. And then let's go turn by turn instead of like interrupting. We're both talking about mid game freezing, right? Not early game. It's after like one or two turret 30 yeah. and like 10, 15 minutes into the game. So, yeah. okay. My perspective on freezing is when you freeze, you create four B five situations. And I believe mm -hmm. League is about making situations, like putting people in uncomfortable situations and forcing them to make mistakes and being aggressive, especially with Scythestone and Green Smite no longer in the game, and especially with champions that have so much upfront damage and so much engaged champions that are being played nowadays, it's very hard to gain back space because um, people stop playing full tanks outside of jungle. And even in jungle, people are shifting away from Sedge Jarbin and more people are playing stuff like Gragas and Silas. So it becomes harder and harder to play the game when you don't have vision and when you don't have control. So I think freezing is really hard to do in the mid game and it's just not practical as a strategy. Okay. I mean, that that's that's a blanket statement, right? But mm -hmm. games have isolated map states where you can you can pause and say, if a freeze happens, what happens here? I mean, I, I guess say, saying that it's impractical is it, it, it's hard for me because I had hundreds of scrims versus LCK and LPL teams mm -hmm. where uh, our team in spring is considerably worse than these teams. Mm -hmm. And we froze on them. Mm -hmm. And in the YouTube clip that you have up, you can actually see KT get frustrated and ping the freeze. Mm -hmm. uh, saying that you can't freeze is dishonest uh, because evidently, I, I mean, I, I presented a clip in this very YouTube video where a freeze occurred. Okay. Um, but saying that freezing isn't action is also uh disingenuous Fre freezing can be an oh, action okay. so, well here's the thing so i don't think freezing i don't think freezing is impossible i think freezing is impractical so maybe that is a situation where um freezing is possible but if maybe that's one out of 100 situation that came up maybe that's 100 out of 100 situation i just think it is so impractical and if it was more practical and teams could be doing it more we will see way more situations like where it's doable. Like I don't want to get into like should could well, KT have broken the freeze here uh, or could KT have not uh, broken the freeze here because I think that takes away from the core argument. My core argument is there are game states where freezing is possible, but those states are so few and in between out of all the game states that are possible, and it's so it take it's so niche. It doesn't make time put. It doesn't make sense to put time into it when. Teams have limited amount of time to get better and there are other avenues that come up and other avenues that are much more practical to put time into and improve on. I, well, I, I, so I, I disagree with that. And the reason that I disagree with it is mm -hmm. because I, I have DMs as well as freelance coaching with LEC and LCS and Academy players where they'll bring it up mm -hmm. uh, or they'll do it in scrims. And then some of the teammates get uh, frust flustered by it or they don't want to go through the motions to do it. And then mm -hmm. they just would prefer to play how they want to play mm -hmm. teams aren't a dictatorship mm -hmm. right um so it's not that teams aren't trying to freeze after the video went out uh, there were several dms that i got from pro players mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people reference perks uh roasting mm -hmm. the youtube video on stream mm -hmm. with some of the most mentally impaired language i've ever fucking heard uh, i i what is it completely no, fine, fine, fine to bring in but, other people but, but, but i don't want to right, turn right. into like perk sucks or this person said no, this no, i want to keep it between i know us. i know so so you're, you're saying that the way that LOL is right now tends to favor uh, aggressive play, diving, and yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Right? Uh, um, it favors making... It, or sure. The actual statement is it favor, but, the current state of League is forcing people to make errors and asking difficult questions by okay. being aggressive. So does that make it 
right or does it make it the most optimal thing to do in any given map state here's the thing so i think there's like two separate most optimal things that we should talk about and that's where you and i differ the most so like there is like an optimal in a sense of people have limited time and people have limited mechanics and people have limited skill level if we program computers i think what's if I'm telling someone how to program a computer to play League of Legends, it's going to be very different from how I'm going to tell a player or a team to practice League of Legends due to the limitations of the time they have, due to the limitations of players they have. So I think like what's technically most optimal and what's most optimal for teams are completely different. All right. So the 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 thing about um, saying that LOL tends to be playing this way mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily make it right or wrong. Ever since I came out onto the scene, actually, I met you the first year I came into League. Mm -hmm. um, I was always advocating uh, for different things to happen. Mm -hmm. I've, I've always tried to uh, push boundaries of what might be happening in the game mm -hmm. um, in terms of what I was seeing. Mm -hmm. uh, so you played StarCraft. Um, mm -hmm. So if in 2007, mm -hmm. um, Prodosses didn't use Corsair DT mm -hmm. and everyone said Corsair DT couldn't work, mm -hmm. And then, and then Bisu came yeah. along. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but if Bisu in 2006 or mm -hmm. a month before he used the build against Savior said uh, Corsair DT is good, mm -hmm. everyone would say, well, no, that's not how Protoss plays against Zerg. Mm -hmm. But that's not an argument. Mm -hmm. If so. Bisu can freeze frame replays or mm -hmm. show a build order and say, if the Corsair comes out at this time mm -hmm. and the Dark Templar comes out at this time, mm -hmm. the Zerg has to respond in this way. And if they can't, they lose out on this, this, and this. Okay. Which is what I've done on LCK casts mm -hmm. and in the clips. So you mean revo saying... you mean like revolutionizing? You mean like some he revolutionized the matchup by doing some so for people that don't understand like and so basically um Zerg used to spank Protoss. Zerg is this insect race and Protoss is this um like alien race in starcraft and zerg used to spank protoss and then there's this player named bisu he came up with his own build that was never done before and he revolutionized like how that matchup was played and so that's that's the context into what ls is saying anyways go on yeah, yeah. so so bisu came along and the matchup changed mm -hmm. but we saw we saw many instances of this happen throughout starcraft's uh revolution yeah um terrans used to think that you needed four to six marines to expand and mm -hmm. then isle of oof came along and just walled in with one marine in a siege tank yeah better sim and, city and improve yeah the better better sim city and he defended mm -hmm. um terrans used to think that you couldn't defend against bulldog mm -hmm. the three gateway with shuttle mm -hmm. and isle of oof showed how to block bulldog mm -hmm. flash the flash build mm -hmm. disregarded everything the protoss could do it covered all angles mm -hmm. that was the whole thing about the flash build Mm -hmm. beat it beat reaver it beat dark templar it beat uh two it beat 10 15 gate mm -hmm. it beat bulldog it, it covered all areas and it sacrificed to do it. it it compromised its army state for a better sim city better economy and in exchange it had a more powerful 13 minute push okay but in the early stages protoss could do whatever they want so uh, let's protoss let's go less into analogies but i understand the right, fact right. that like starcraft revolutionized um can you tie this okay. into how it place into your argument like there's revolutions so, that happened in starcraft where people thought things were impossible that's your main point regarding the starcraft sure. part right so mm -hmm. right that, that's the main point so saying that league tends to be playing one way right now doesn't mm -hmm. mean that what's happening in a game is right mm -hmm. people can actually play blad and win games mm -hmm. they can play objectively worse they can make worse decisions and they can pan out okay you can make the correct gank and then miss your skill shots and then give away two kills and double buffs. Okay. You can make the correct Baron call and miss the smite. Okay. There's there's lots of variables that can happen in a game. Okay. I'm not saying that you freeze every single chance that you get. Never did I assert that. I even said it inside of the video. Mm -hmm. But the current way that LOL players uh, utilize vision and how they relate vision to some sort of objective or something or their disregard for freezing right because in lck i get to talk about it all the time because it's very slow mm -hmm. it's usually seven minutes of downtime 13 minutes to 21 minutes lck is very boring mm -hmm. and there's infinite opportunities presented where either side could freeze and if the winning team freezes 
then the losing team, who's down resources, down XP, now has to break the freeze. Okay. And if the argument is that, well, they can just go here and get vision, then the question becomes, well, is the vision relevant? Okay. So if, be before going too much into that point, let me handle your points yeah. one by one, and then we can go forward. So regarding sure. like the StarCraft parts, um, the StarCraft did have a lot of revolutions, and I think a lot of revolutions happen in stale metas and unchanging games. So I think games like Smash, games like StarCraft, the games that don't get patched and the changes that we see, I mean, for StarCraft, like maths do change, but generally um, similar styles of maps are played. There's like few times where maths become dramatically different, but in like the, let's say, uh, early 2000 to 2010 StarCraft, like generally mm -hmm. majority of the maps stayed the same and people kept innovating on top of each other because, I mean, that, that was the only way to drive the game forward. There was innovation on, on maps, top of innovation right, yeah. on top of innovation because imagine League had no patches. If League had no patches, then I think game would be figured out to a degree where people might do stuff like that. But what what's been happening is League isn't StarCraft and Riot has been actively forcing a certain type of gameplay and Riot has been actively forcing stuff like freezing and stuff like macro and stuff like delay gameplay to be bad and there's just been elements added in more and more so that makes freezing bad. So I agree with like revolutionizing and it is something that is definitely possible. And maybe freezing is something that's possible but I think it's just really unlikely because due to the way Riot is pushing the game to be more action heavy and less about macro and less being delayed. And also for the revolution part, I I still am on the side where I don't think freezing is going to be a practical way to play in League. But if a team is able to freeze and change kind of the um, agenda of how the game is supposed to play mid and late game, then I will completely change my mind. But until a team like dominates with that strategy and forces team to adapt, I'm on the fence or I'm on the side where I think freezing is impractical and freezing is the wrong way to play the game. My, my only gripe with that would be mm -hmm. that you're you're waiting for pro players to do something right rather than looking at it in isolation isolation and saying what ought to be possible. So I'm looking at a situation so but also like it's pro players can't always come to the perfect absolute perfect decision they're going to come to the most optimal decision so where freezing might be the most optimal i just think freezing isn't the most optimal decision in like 100 let's say like i think out of 100 mid game map states i think freezing might be the most optimal in like maybe two of them or like five of them cuz it's only optimal in two of them or five of them it doesn't make sense to put practice into where so okay go ahead no, I, I offered this to you before, I believe, mm -hmm. on the show with Thorn. Just mm -hmm. ask me any VOD, I will skim through it, mm -hmm. and I'll tell you a point in the game where they can freeze. Any any random VOD, I'm, I'm obviously not prepared, so... Okay. Okay. Um, any, any random VOD. Any you, you random pick. VOD. Um, TLCG Game 5. Actually, that was Sonoteric. Um, something without Sonoteric. C TLCG Game 4. Alright. So, if you can you see the minimap? Because sometimes the yep. YouTube player is pretty... Okay, so... The wave is going to push into Rumble. Uh, top Because side, Silas right. just... Oh, okay, bot lane. Bot lane. Bottom. Yeah, yeah. The, the wave's going to push into Rumble and Silas is recalled. Mm -hmm. So if Rumble takes the that wave plus the next wave mm -hmm. and walks it all the way back down into Golems, mm -hmm. there's no Baron. Mm -hmm. He has He's going to have Teleport available before mm -hmm. anything would come up. Mm -hmm. What? What do you want Team Liquid to try to do? I would want Team Liquid, um, can I, can, can you give me like 15 seconds? I kind of want to see context for how yeah, they yeah, ended yeah, up sure, in this sure. situation. Let's see. Oh, at the beginning of right. it. Because they're not going to get to left scuttle first. They're okay. not going to get to left side jungle first. So they All the camps are gone. Try to contest Dragon, Jensen got poked out, Jensen 3 calling, Impact already recalled. Okay, so it's kind of like a reset timer. So let's go back to the original timer you mentioned. It was like 30-34, right? Uh, 3034, yep. Okay, so 3034, it's everyone's recalling. So we want Rumble to freeze the wave all the way here. I mean, I guess the most obvious thing that I would want them to do is if they have knowledge on enemy blue side and Scuttle being up, like reset and then go try to play for a top side, like try to get the jungle control on top side quadrant, try to get the blue buff, try to get camps there, and then try to push for top lane. And okay. yeah, I, I, right. if, so, if Rumble is freezing, so I would want them to try to put right. it, if they see rumbles like actively freezing like it doesn't make sense for jensen to go they should be like okay you guys play 4v5 we're going to try to control take control of top side of the map try to take top first turret mid first turret and then control the 
blue side jungle quadrant. Okay, so right in, in, in the freeze frame, mm -hmm. uh, Clutch Gaming, they have Cloud Drake, their higher levels, mm -hmm. uh, their higher level uh, jungle, mm -hmm. uh, Huni's higher level, etc. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to be the ones that get to their blue side jungle first. Just champion base MS. They can't alter that. TL, TL can't control that. The only way, so, I, I agree with you, like if they don't like make dramatic moves, but... So Kenshin and Varys are already mid, and Impact and Seju, I'm, maybe x Mitty has to back, yeah, he probably has to back items, he didn't get a buy, and then the Skarner has, uh, whatchamacallit, Glory, so he probably is sitting on a lot of gold. The only way they could get to top side first would be, like, if they move, like, Scar or Varys and Kenshin move there and play Sword and, like, try to TP. Yeah. But they generally, can, they, yeah. Okay, sure. They can, they can get Scuttle Crab maybe with mm -hmm. Tom Kench QW, I'll, I'll give them that, but... Mm -hmm. Blue Gromp and Wolves will go down, and then Rumble will just sit in bottom. Mm -hmm. Jace can go top and get the turret, mm -hmm. but the turret doesn't matter because TL doesn't scale as good. Mm -hmm. So now Rumble is... Can I ask regarding the scaling part? So what do you mean by um, doesn't scale as good? Like, where does the scaling actually matter? Because like when people talk about scaling, like sometimes you beat the enemy team when you get to six items. Sometimes you beat the enemy team when you get to four items. In your From your perspective, like where like where does TL's like scaling cut fail for them i feel like clutch gaming wins two and a half items forward every team fight pretty easily okay. rumble rumble is too obnoxious the the way that sedge and silas have to team fight and mm -hmm. varus being short range mm -hmm. i mean aurelia is just gonna have a field day they have no mm -hmm. reliable way to kill aurelia or so or they don't have a way to kill aurelia and Sivir both mm -hmm. but if i mean if, if the game just stalls right now mm -hmm. TL, there's no Baron on the map, and there's not going to be for 45 seconds. Even mm -hmm. if there was, Rumble would have teleport by that time. Mm -hmm. If he's sitting bottom, he's saying to Jensen or Impact or double, well, not double lift. It's going to be Jensen or Impact. Mm -hmm. um, unlock the freeze or bleed several hundred golden XP each minute. Mm -hmm. Actually, here's the thing. I agree with you 100%, but I think we're asking the wrong question. I do think Clutch is eventually going to win this game, and Clutch scaling is good. And TL, like, they're behind on a Jace, and, like, their Seju is really behind. I actually 100% agree with you, like, that Clutch is in a better spot, and they're going to scale well. So, like, freezing is one thing they can do, but this is more of a game state where I just think, like, TL is fucked. The reverse question I would ask is, do you think there's better things that... Or, the reverse question I kind of want to answer is, I think there's better things that Clutch can be doing instead of keeping the map frozen. I think we're both okay, on the like, same. We're both on the same page. Like this situation is kind of shitty for TL, and it's good for Clutch. And you're saying the ideal thing for Clutch to do is freeze, right? Yeah, I, I'm saying the ideal thing mm -hmm. for Clutch to do is freeze. And my reasoning for it would be there's so if Clutch eat their blue side jungle, mm -hmm. two minute camp respawn. That's mm -hmm. all fine. They have control of their red side jungle anyway because Rumble's in close proximity. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if they lose top tier one. Mm -hmm. They don't want to fight ideally until two and a half items because two and a half items, mm -hmm. the percentage chance or the the likelihood that mm -hmm. they're going to win dramatically increases. It's like Terran getting two one, mm -hmm. Siege Tanks having plus oh. two weapons. <laughs> no Starcraft analogy. We can no, talk no, no, just no. about Leo. Yeah, yeah okay. you'll, you'll understand it. Yeah. Even if, uh, Fans will also. Stuff, it. Yeah, it has to be about okay, everyone. Okay. So it, I, I, I feel like it's that dramatic. So if they know that, then uh that there's no reason to take any fights that would have a lesser percentage chance if mm -hmm. the objective is to win because mm -hmm. you're a professional mm -hmm. so of course just like in poker you mm -hmm. always want to have the highest odds mm -hmm. so clutch right now has ace king mm -hmm. the opponent has ace queen you don't <laughs> no, need a king that no poker just, no, no, no. let's just talk let's just talk <laughs> yeah but po no poker poker's a <laughs> okay. perfect okay okay how, how about this i'll just use okay. numbers okay. you have uh you have uh, fucking three, four, mm -hmm. and your opponent has one, two, mm -hmm. right? So let's say three and four is greater than one, two, mm -hmm. right? So, but if you can pair the card, if you can pair the numbers, mm -hmm. then it becomes a pair. It becomes stronger. So mm -hmm. if the opponent can hit a one mm -hmm. or hit a two. I, okay, I understand. You're, so you're basically okay. saying um, it's not the most ideal for Clutch to fight right now. It's more ideal for them to fight later once they get... Uh, two and a half items, yeah. right? Because okay. if you go into TL's vision, mm -hmm. you, you go into their perspective and you ask them, uh, what are you thinking right now? Mm -hmm. And they're thinking, we need to fight. Mm -hmm. okay. So then if you reverse engineer it, mm 
-hmm. Clutch goes, okay, well, Teal's thinking that they need to fight. Teal's thinking, we can't do Baron. Mm -hmm. Teal's thinking, we can't unlock that freeze. No one can overextend that far against Predator Skarner okay. and Rumble freezing. Okay. So then all of a sudden, you narrow it down, mm -hmm. and TL just go, what the fuck are we going to do? Okay. So let's talk about that. So I agree with you that most of the time, like, teams don't fight on the most ideal items, and a lot of times, like, teams handshake bad fights. So yeah. um, we don't have to go into the technicality of, like, is it better for Clutch to fight right now, or is it better for Clutch to fight on two and a half item? The other aspect that I would kind of put onto you is by clutch freezing and clutch giving up certain parts of the map and certain parts of vision um because we're playing with humans just league players and even pro players are more likely to get caught out when there isn't vision so by doing by trying to scale to two and a half items and giving up some of the map control to freeze and have more gold and to scale up clutch kind of opens them up to be vulnerable to them making mistakes. If they don't make any of those mistakes and scale to the two and a half items and then get control again and then take fights, 100% agree with you. Like theoretically, that is the best way to play, but cause mm -hmm. pro players are human and when there's less vision on the map, they are more inclined to make mistakes and they do make mistakes. I don't think that's the most ideal way for them to be playing. Okay, my, my, my response to that would be mm -hmm. um, that I, I don't think it's that difficult mm -hmm. to you're saying that they don't have vision, so they get picked off. I'm not saying they 100% like, get picked off. It's just they are no, more no, no, likely know, to get picked it, off. There's a possibility, mm -hmm. right? Um, so then why even venture into an area where you can get picked off when blue trinkets exist? Mm -hmm. Or skill shots that can check brushes, for instance. Maybe not in this particular game, mm -hmm. but they don't need to leave the vicinity of their turrets, and mm -hmm. they can have defensive wards that would alert them of anything in their jungle if the jungle camps are down there's no reason to be in there I, if they if have, have if, they, trinkets, if they just have wars there right and the wars get cleared then they, they, they're cleared out sure mm, and then then but aren't they back to square one of we don't have vision and we need to start getting control of the map and then they're more inclined to make mistake when there isn't vision no i feel like that's false safety can it, you like for instance can you explain false safety false safety in the sense that you don't need to know what is in the fog of war in order to play around it Mm -hmm. If it, the, the the question ultimately, if if they surrender all their blue side vision, right? But the the camps are down, mm -hmm. so the camps have a two minute respawn timer. Mm -hmm. You don't need to venture in as a unit until mm -hmm. the camps would be respawning in two minutes, which means that up until that two minutes, you hug your turrets like your mother's breast or something, you okay. know. But and when when they do that, right? When they hug turrets, doesn't it allow yeah. like flanking champions like um? Silas or Sejuani or maybe not in this game state like other champions to get behind your turrets and wait in brushes And as like the waves are coming up, you don't know if that player is there or not So you have to yeah. back up from the turret. Yeah, so You just said it yourself. Maybe not in this game state, but mm. this is the game state So I'm saying to freeze well maybe like after Silas and Sejuani comes right and they go to the mm -hmm. brush between like the mid turret like either on the right side or the left side and if you don't have mm -hmm. control there or your words get cleared out you don't know if people went there, so when the waves come in, aren't you in a danger of getting doped by a Silas or a Sejuani, and you can't account for how many people are going to be there because you don't have vision on them whenever the waves are coming in? No, I don't think so. I mean, I think you can time your... Like, we can, we can acknowledge, right, that Clutch Gaming needs significantly less wards to cover the areas that they need, right? So if Braum has four, mm -hmm. he only realistically needs to place one mm -hmm. out of the four. Because everything inside of river is irrelevant, mm -hmm. everything inside of mid lane is irrelevant, mm -hmm. everything inside of red side jungle is mostly irrelevant. That can be covered with one ward because Rumble's freezing in bot. Mm -hmm. um, you can use no information as information. Uh, in the video, mm -hmm. uh, the YouTube video, I reference Scanner Sweep, mm -hmm. which I think, I mean, it is Blue Trinket, mm -hmm. quite literally. And for Warcraft players, it's Paladin. Mm -hmm. uh, Ter Terran. Uh, I, I know you don't want me to use StarCraft analogies, but I know that you played StarCraft, mm -hmm. and I, I think I, it's, it's not for me, it's for everyone else. No, I know, I know. <laughs> but t t like, like, like what you're saying, mm -hmm. Terran didn't need to see everything that's going on in order to play around it. Mm -hmm. But as yeah, long as they can, were gravitating. Can you, uh, can you give like game states and StarCraft are much more um, well refined because you play like you play three matchups and you play on very limited maps and you play it over and over and over again so like people have way better yeah. understanding of game states in starcraft where game states in league 
are way more varied because you never play against the same comp. Like you play against so many different comps and so many different map states. It's hard to have the same kind of understanding of the game state from StarCraft compared to a game state from League. In this situation, right? Two minutes to clear out the jungle timers. Mm -hmm. During those two minutes, waves spawn every 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. So if in top wave, you notice that two minion waves are colliding and Jace isn't there. Mm -hmm. Well, why is Jace just willingly allowing 200 gold and XP to go into nothingness, mm -hmm. right? So you blue trinket the Baron. Are they on the Baron? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Now we can deduce that they're in one of five potential brushes. Mm -hmm. But the big point is they're not on the Baron. Mm -hmm. So if they're not on the Baron, then you don't even have to venture in. So if you swap to three blue trinket or something, which is something I talk about in the video, mm -hmm. it becomes really easy to space out blue trinkets on the Baron. Mm -hmm. And even with a mountain dragon, this team does not do Baron in 10 seconds or 15 seconds or anything like that. It, it takes time. Mm -hmm. I, I, think so we're because... I think we're both on the same page regarding like yeah, yeah, yeah. Kale's in a shitty situation and how clutches should abuse. Like I think how clutch should abuse would be like rumble push out, bot side, Everyone take their reset, like match TL for reset and start pushing out and then start getting control over Baron, Yorsis. Uh, start getting control over Baron and force TL into awkward situations and try to catch them with a Skarner ult when TL's trying to check in somewhere for vision, Yorsis. Um, Freed's bot side, take care of blue jungle and also um, tr try to get wait until two and a half items and then fight, right? Yeah. But with what you're saying, control vision, get a Skarner pick, etc. Mm -hmm. if, if you ask Team Liquid in this freeze frame, what do you need right now? The answer will be to fight. Full on 5v5, but I, I don't want them to full on 5v5. I want them to push out lanes. And if TL isn't touching the side wave and then they're letting the wave push in and then great, just sit there. And then TL eventually has to send people to deal with the wave. And when that's happening, make your vision deeper and deeper. And eventually TL right. has to come in and that, that's where I want them to pick. I my I don't right. want them to take a full on open 5v5. I do agree, like that gives TL the best shot. What I want them to do is control side wave and make the game in a state where TL has to thin out and then try to catch them when they are thinned out. You mean you? Oh, you 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 want TL to thin out? Yeah, I want. Then... Yeah, I want clutch to clutch to have control of sideways and clutch sideways to be pushing and then to be pressuring and then clutch like the core group of Fiver, Brom, and Skarner to get vision and then once we see people on sideways, then clutch can be clutch can group more once they have control. I want them to reset and get control first before they start looking for picks, but not a not a full on five v five. Okay. Uh. I, I guess my, my only response to that would be that you're then requiring Clutch to cover more uh, map area to ultimately achieve a similar goal, mm -hmm. but it potentially has more volatility. Mm -hmm. Because I'm asking them to literally draw a triangle mm -hmm. on their tier 2 turrets and tier 1 mid turret mm -hmm. and basically say, just defend this. Very, very simple fortification. Okay. Very simple wall. Um, and their their objective is clear cut. It's defined. Mm -hmm. They know that they're gravitating towards a point in the game where TL can't win. They know that TL wants them to fight. Now, if they push outside lanes and they manage vision and look for a Skarner, that I feel like uh, is infinitely easier to fumble. It's infinitely easier to mess up the vision mm -hmm. or to cover more ground. And this doesn't even have to do with League of Legends. It has to do with warfare yeah when you're one three one ing you're more likely to get caught because you're spread out in three positions when you're and you're you're yeah. having to actually yeah. manage more tasks mm -hmm. so if i if i bring this all full circle where you said um about the all the players being on the same page mm -hmm. it's a lot harder to coordinate what you're asking to do the management of three separate lanes in addition to vision rather than a defensive sim city that has clear defined borders and clear defined timings where they're willing to leave it. Okay, so I guess the ultimate argument would come down to in a defensive spot where you give vision or you're giving up certain parts of the map, is it easier to get caught or make mistakes or is it easier to make mistake when you're spread out on the map and pushing out and then trying to get vision? Uh, may, in, in, in this specific instance, I would say it's, it, it's a lot safer and easier to, to freeze for rumble. Okay. And it applies. Uh, it, it, they're losing 400 gold a minute, or not 400 gold a minute. Sorry, they're losing uh, a little bit over 300 gold a minute, mm -hmm. and not even factoring an XP. Mm -hmm. That's very painful. Uh, I mean, it, because now you're also forcing 
carries like Jace or Forrest or Silas to share XP too. So there's going to even be something stunting there. They can't just arbitrarily go mid lane. We know that that's not possible. Not against Garner, not against Braum. Can I ask then, or beyond this yeah. situation, can I ask, like, going forward into um, playoffs that are left, gauntlet that are left, and worlds, do you think we'll see more freezing? Mm, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Uh, from the DMs that I got from pro players, it sounded like it created Discord. Uh, Discord being, like, arguments or tension. Mm hmm uh, because they felt like it would be something that they would have to learn and work towards learning and in the middle of playoffs and finals and whatnot, there's no point. Okay, then maybe uh, not for playoffs, then do you think during Worlds? Because people will have a long time I to would finish. hope. I would hope, right? I, I genuinely would hope. But, I mean, LCK took seven months to pick up Karthus, so... Jesus Christ, I don't have high hopes for Korea, I'll tell you that much. Okay. Where where would you think it's most likely to be seen, out of those four reasons? I, d I don't know if we see it. I, I genuinely don't know if we see it. Okay. Like like I said, getting BBQ to do it, mm -hmm. um, was an effort in itself because the eighty. I remember the, I remember co uh, the ADC. He would laugh every time he messed up. Because he would just start hitting the wave, and we would all laugh, or like the top laner would ping him, question mark pings, being like, why are you pushing? And he'd be like, oh, I forgot, I'm used to it in solo queue. Or he would say that he's used to it from playing scrims elsewhere. Okay. And it took weeks, and even still, sometimes, they would have lapses inside of scrims, and we would just joke and meme each other. Well, not meme each other, but, you know, they would, they would question mark ping each other playfully. Mm-hmm. No, I, but, I, I agree with you, like, getting players to do concepts that they haven't done before is extremely hard. When I initially talked about priority, vision, objective, like, getting priority, then getting vision, then getting objective, like, I yeah. also was made fun of, and then, like, now people do that all the time, or even, like, just fucking four-man bot dives, like, people are like, this is so cheesy, this isn't a standard play that people can do. Like, it's hard to get pro players to do something, because they feel like they're right, like, they played for such a right. long time, and right. they achieve excellence in what they do, so to completely change their mind, it's really hard. So I, I can see your point of view where even if freezing is the most optimal, people might not do it. Just from this conversation, I'm not still not completely convinced it's the most optimal and I still think it's niche enough. And I still think, I, I also do think like there is a practical sense where it plays against you, where people are so not used to doing it. And there's so many aggressive teams that are good where your argument, even if you are correct, you're against, you, just odds are shitty for you. Just due to how IG plays, just due to how G2 plays, just odds are really shitty for you in terms of people just, look, yeah, people just look at the best teams and they're like, this is the best way to play. They don't look at a LCK commentator and then they're like, this is the best way to play. It's a lot easier to emulate when G2 has boss and boss up how they play the game than versus like taking this one video and then trying to copy from it. I'll, I'll make a final point and you can make a final point and then I'll go get ready for listen local. Oh, that's fine. The yeah. thing you said regarding freeze frames, where that's where I think um it starts to distance itself from practicality because pro players don't play things on a freeze frame. So even if we can identify what was the best thing to do on a freeze frame, unless we can develop a system where pro players can also do that while in the game without having to freeze frame and look at all these little avenues, I think it's really hard for it to be applied in game. You mean phrasing? No, no, like you, we're talking about things in like a still state, right? Where we see all the information and then we're talking about it with the VOD pause and then oh, we're talking sure, about sure, the sure. most ideal. Like we need to be able to teach that ability to pro players and we need to be able to simplify it and conceptualize it where they can do it in game without needing to go through all this thought process. Without that being possible, I don't think people will be able to freeze. And unless that part is simplified enough, I don't think people will ever freeze. Um. Well, about if people can freeze or not, right? I... I... I scrimmed it, right? We did freeze mm -hmm. uh, on that topic. So, um, so I mean, I, I'm someone that has hundreds of games of watching it uh, and coaching. I mean, maybe it, it is possible, and like you did prove it in scrims. It's just because we haven't seen it in pro play, it's hard to convince. No, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And then uh, on, on the the last topic about um, teaching pro players to assess the the map states and whatnot um, in a I, real I time would, situation, not like in a real time situation, yeah. sure. It would be like going from uh, standard chess to bullet, mm -hmm. which just means you have to practice it. Uh, th things that 
seem normal and standard to but us you, now. You all, to, you all thought to convince them this is the best way we should be putting in our time, right? Because like we're not just doing it this versus nothing. Is it better to learn to freeze or not learn to freeze? It's is it better to learn to freeze versus like is it better to learn how to control Baron better? If that's like a thing that like that team is having problems with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, sure, of course. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with you in I the mean, sense yeah, it's yeah, better to learn to freeze yeah. than nothing, but. There's just bigger problems and more practical things that teams work on so where learning to freeze is just so far down the list. I would say freezing can help you beat teams much better than you. Mm. But that's my own take. Okay. Well, Les, thank you so much for taking the time. Like, once the finals are done, let's find the time we're both mutually available and both turn on or turn on our stream and then let's do the VOD review together. We don't have to just make it about freezing. We can talk about other parts too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All, All right. right. I'll talk to you later. All right. Yep. Later. Bye. See you.